Hi, welcome. We are making a calamari series and I'm starting from scratch for this one. With the Super F7, I'm going to show you how to make a EFI or UEFI or GPT installation in VirtualBox. And of course, it applies to SSD and hard disk as well, but this is just easier to film. Let's start really from scratch. We take a new um, create a virtual box here. Name is going to be template, so that's okay. And then EFI. So rather than using an MBR, we're going to take EFI. And we're going to take Linux, of course, and then Arch Linux 64 bits. We're not supporting 32 at all, ever. So 50-50 memory, more or less. And then hard disk, we're going to take enough because we want to explain how to partition everything. So let's take 30. Create. There are no hard disks these days with 30 gigs, but it's an exercise. So we have a template, but the template is not finished yet. You go to the settings, go inside there, take a look at all the tabs you have, right? So first thing, all filled in, advanced, description, disk inscription. Let's not, not, make, not make it difficult, more difficult than it is already. This is the one thing you need to just click, all right? Read it. When checked, the guest will support EFI, which is required to boot certain guest OSs. Non-EFI aware OSs will not be able to boot. Arco Linux, Arch Linux is aware. So, fine. Next thing, it's not oh, next thing here as well. Processor, one, two, three, four, four, for the host, for, for the guests, enabling the, this thing here, which is physical address extension, etc., which just means that it can look down from the virtual box to your real hardware and say, oh, I have this CPU, I have that much memory, and so on. Inksy will use it. Acceleration is good. And here another big problem, maybe, if you forget it. So 50-50 video memory speeds things up. But if you forget this, then it's really screwed up because your resolution will be super, super bad. So VBOX VJ needs to be set at all time. And if hardware is available, let's take a look. When checked, the virtual machine will give access to the 3D graphics capabilities available on the host. So if you got it, you get it. Okay, that's this. This is not interesting and all the rest is unimportant for what we're going to do. Okay, so this is an, an awesome template. Okay, now we clone it and let's make an exercise. This is going to be Arco Linux. Oh God. And it's going to be, well, the 19.07.9 and it's EFI. So we'll know later on how and what it is. Not an MBR. Go in here. So this is just a copy paste, but all the settings are correct. Everything is okay. VBOX VGA, everything is set. It's super easy for the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay, clone it. Optical drive is empty. Choose a disk with lots of uh, ISOs to choose from. I'm going to choose Arch Linux 1907, boot from it. And we're booting an EFI, of course, in the other screen. This is how an EFI looks. If you have a nice logo and all colors, that's MBR. This is how EFI looks, okay? It's all black and then this uh, white lines and that's it. Using Ctrl F to maximize my screen. So the right control, by the way, on my keyboard. And then an F is going to for full screen so we can see everything and record everything nicely on a 1920 on 1080 resolution. Now, don't think your system crashed. Don't think VirtualBox is hanging. Don't think Arch Linux is hanging. It's just VirtualBox. Anything EFI related, it takes a while to kick in, but it will kick in. It's just a matter of patience. And there we are. So it's booting up finally, you could say, but hey, what's 10, 20 seconds in your life? As long as it works. Great. So we have, um, let's put that away a little bit. 
So we have here our Arch Linux installer, it's a Calamaris, it's a lot of information, a lot of tutorials already, just a quick mentioning, okay, that's the version, that's how you know it, and then you go to next, this either works or doesn't, depending on a server that either works or the maintenance and you have internet connection and so on, but just pin it anywhere you live, right? Correct pin, and then your time zone is set, I'm gonna choose my keyboard, you choose yours, and then you can erase things. This is what I basically do all the time. I never do any difficult. I'll just say whatever, really. Just follow along and let's maybe do this whatever and just hold there just before we install it. So if we just say, please install me, don't, don't bother me with all these difficult partitions and all these elements, I'll learn it later. Not the time, not the place. That's not gonna work. And then log in, I use the same. Okay, next. So this is what he suggests to do. And that's interesting because you can learn from this. Any operating system that gives you such a summary will display information that you need. So it's gonna create a GPT partition on a device SDA. So that's your hard disk. It's one big chunk of hard disk, the real hardware, the thing you buy, the thing you put in your machine, that's a hard disk. And if you are going to divide it, this hard disk in elements, in parts, then it's a partition, it's a logical part. It's not a physical part, it's, it's logical. You are going to divide it into pieces. It's going to create 300 megabytes, that's not much. On Arch Linux D, we have the phase five going to Arch Linux. I found somewhere online, okay, 512 is, is a good number. But if you take 300 megabyte or 500 megabyte, it's megabytes, it's not gigabytes, so it really doesn't matter. But 300 seems to be just enough already. So it's going to make a partition, SDA, it's going to format it differently than we used to. FAT32 is something you might know from USB formatting, right? Um, in the days, the, we had this, this formatation, it's an old formatation, and it's going to have a flag, important, a flag called boot. Not ESP, boot. For the older guys, maybe you will remember this word, ESP. No, boot from now on. Then you're going to create a big partition for all hard disk or root, let's say, okay? And set up new folder. Also important, this, this FAT32 is going to be mounted in a particular place. It needs to be this, nothing else, boot EFI. And then I'm just gonna launch Arch Linux on this new X4. All right, that's a simple thing. I'll suggest do that. But let's include also in this video a difficult thing. What if you want to manually partition? That's where people get stuck. You actually need to do the same thing as, as it, it's suggested there, basically. You go to next. You have here an unpartitioned because yeah, because we went back, there's no line here. I should mention this to the guys, and well, I'll show them this video. The trick is new partition table. Okay, and there it is. So they should actually reload again if you go back also. But that's not important, not a biggie. So you know, there it is. So we have this thing we can click on now. Okay, then we create it. What should we create? Exactly the same things as suggested by Calamaris, but manually. So rather than dragging, which is an awesome thing, you can drag it, drag it it's lovely, but dragging to get 300 and such is a little bit difficult for me. Just type in 300 because it's a very small thing. Okay, now I just pressed enter, which I shouldn't have done. So I'm going to double click it or edit it, not delete, edit, and it's back. So first, let's let's say you go from the top to the bottom. So 300 is good, X4 is wrong, it has to be FAT32. No mount point, it will fail. It needs to be boot EFI. It will still fail, and I'll do the exercise just so you see, no, I won't. I'll not educational, <laughs> it needs to be boot. We'll do it later on and set boot off and you'll see the message. So, 300 megabyte, GPT, FAT32, boot EFI, boot. 
take a mental picture. That's it. Okay, click. Free space. And now it's up to you. How do you want it? One big partition? One big partition. Here it is. What you are going to mount, of course, your roots. That's one big partition. Flex, forget about it. Okay, set, next. And if you get here and there's no error, it will work. It will install. So, back. What if I don't want a big one? I want it more difficult. I want to have, for instance, a creation of X4, which is good, my root, which is okay, and with 10 gigabytes, I'm all good. 10, 10, 10, more or less. Okay, so this is going to be my root. And all the rest is all my videos, my music, my etc. This is going to be my home. Okay, fine, create your home. X4, mount point, well, your home. Okay, so home Eric and every user is going to be in here. The home. Boot, flags here, no, nothing. No flags, just for boot. For EFI, eh? has to be boot. Boot EFI. If I do next, if Calamaris doesn't complain, it will install. Another possibility. Delete, free space, create. What if I want to have a little bit of swap? You want to have a little bit of swap. Fine. Then you do first the home. Oops, that's something else. The home. Okay. And all the rest. This guy is 4.5 gig. That will be not a mounting point, but a file system. Linux swap. And there is no mount point. There is no flags. No flags. Just one. Still one. And if you go for next and not no complaints yet, so this is a check in here after this module is going to do checks. No errors, everything will be fine. Let's introduce an error. Boot is off. Okay. Next, bam. An EFI system partition is necessary to start Arco Linux. A partition was configured with a mount point, boot EFI, points for us. But it's and just read boot flag. It's boot flag is not set. I've just reported it today that it actually should say boot flag it is not set. To set the flag, go back and edit the partition. You can continue without setting the flag, but your system may fail to start. Your system will fail. So back, go to this, go to edit. What we've done is this. This is the major issue probably for people and that's it. This is the correct setting. Maybe it's a good time for me to do a control shift print screen. Select area to grab, take screenshot. This is major information. This is what we need to put in the article. This is the correct setting. And then we go for a next, a next and read it again. GPT is going to create one X4 root, 1x4, home, swap, fine, and then a FAT32, 300 megabyte, not 512, like I suggested on Arch Linux D. And the flag is going to be set as boot, fine, and it's going to set up that input EFI, which is also great, and it's going to make a home mounting point for home. So quite a complex setup, really. We could actually have more, um, well, a folder set up in a different partition, but oh, well, this is already complex enough. And then we install. And this point in time, this is critical, where he says, I'm going to create everything, going to create everything, going to create everything. And now we're in the clear. This is another process. Filling up file system means everything is set up. All the partitions, the, the pizza, the pie is now divided into, what was it, four partitions? So it's, it's done. The work is done. It's going to extract all the data from a particular file and unwrap it, un unzip it, unsquash it, name it how you want it. It means also that the percentages are a little bit different than a standard installation, which I do, which is 2021, and it starts counting. But again, it will take a while before two gigabytes, more or less, is going to be extracted to your system. So this bit here takes a long time and suddenly it just moves along and that's fine. Just so you know, it's not crashed. 
let's uh, pause the video here and wait until the installation is finished. And we're past, no, we're not past, it's still filling up the file system here. All right, he's installing packages, other modules have been started and the unsquashing is finished. So this part that was here. So this part is super fast and um, we're almost ready to reboot and have a look at our system. Of course, it's going to show the partitions that we've used. The thing is, can it reboot is always a question. So there we are, a nice little grub booting up. Eight seconds later, a system is there, even faster than VirtualBox. So there we are. A system works. How? What did we do? Well, you were witness, but let's have a look at Gparted. Let's magnify this thing. Um, so, indeed, this little green thing, FAT32, mount point, remember, boot EFI, 300 megabyte seems to be enough, 512 in you if you want more, right? Used, look at it, look at it, 872 kilobytes, so used, it's nothing. So 300 is way too much. So that's already uh, big. So I'm probably going to change the Arclonix D guide to go for 300. So this little thing, I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody else knows. I haven't Googled it yet. But MSFT data is set behind. Well, this was our boot flag, remember? So Gparton doesn't really say anything. Manage flags we have here something. MSFT data. Well, something. We know we set boot in calamaris. Then we have the X4, so the, the slash, the root, 10 gigabytes, used 8.10. So a complete system with all the files, except maybe you could discuss there is no LibreOffice or OpenOffice or anything like it, then it would be a little bit bigger. We probably something around 10 gigabytes or something, I don't know, maybe nine. Anyway, eight gigabytes on a minimal hard disk that I have to buy here in Europe. 250 gigabytes is my minimal size SSD. I have plenty of space. So in 8 gig, we have an operating system. We have our own uh, home partition, which seems to contain already a little bit information, 367 megabytes just by, well, applications that are running. So what are we talking about? We're actually talking about Control H, this thing, this, this contains what's in here is 367 megabytes. So a Control H shows you the hidden things. It's also gonna be in here. It's also gonna be in the cache and, and other places, right? This contains for the system 367 megabytes. The swap, five gigabytes, which is not being used, zero. And, um, and some leftovers, so if you or cutting a pizza and there's always something that's store a pie. It's always something that's going to be less left over in any operating system. So if it's a pizza, then we have one, two, three, four pieces that we've uh, divided it into. And this is how you set up your EFI system. And um, well, have fun trying out maybe other kind of combinations. All right, cheers.